Hello class, this is a supplement to lecture 7. Lecture 7, uh, which was on pipe flow. Oops, touched the pipe flow 1. And this is an example that we didn't get to in class today that I wanted to give you. So, um, <clears throat> Let's remind ourselves, let's, let's draw a little uh, picture. So suppose we have a uh, pipe here. And we have its length L. Oops, that was a terrible arrow. And we've got some velocity, average velocity, and some size D. OK. So let's write down what the value of these different variables might be. So let's suppose L is 20 meters. So that's a long pipe, so not drawn to scale. And D, uh, the diameter of the pipe is 0.1 meters. Uh, we're going to assume that the flow rate, the volumetric flow rate here is given as 8 times 10 to the minus 3 meters uh, cubed per second. And then the density will be uh, 10 to the 3 kilograms per meters cubed. So that's water. And the viscosity will also be the viscosity of water, um, which I guess I wrote in my notes here, which I'm going to change as a kinematic viscosity. So the, uh, the vis kinematic viscosity is 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. OK which we could get from, which is the same as uh, 10 to the minus 3 uh, Pascal seconds divided by the density there. That's the same thing, OK? So that's the kinematic viscosity. So that would be mu, if you remember what kinematic viscosity is. OK, so how do we calculate the pressure drop? So in part, first for part 1, what we're going to do is calculate the Reynolds number. Calculate RE. Okay, so that's always going to be the first step in these problems is to calculate the Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number is rho u d over mu. Okay, or in this case, uh, since we don't have mu, we have nu, the kinematic viscosity. Um, what we'll do is have u d over nu. Okay. So now we don't have u. Where are we going to get u from? We're going to get that from the vol uh, volumetric flow rate. So uh, q, the volumetric flow rate, which we did in our quiz today, is u times the area pi d squared over 4. So we can find u by algebra and rearrange, which is going to be 4q over pi d squared. Now we can plug that back in to calculate the Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number is going to be 4q over pi d squared times d over nu. Okay, and a d a factor of d will cancel there. And we're going to get 4 over pi. Sorry, my handwriting is kind of sideways. 4 over pi um, q, oh, not equals. Pardon me, pardon me. Go back, fix, 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 fix. 4 over pi, um, and then we have a q in the numerator, and a d, and a nu in the denominator. OK, so now we just need to plug that in. So plug in q, plug in d, plug in nu, and I'll let you plug that into calculator for yourself. OK, um, but what we get out is 1.02 times 10 to the fifth. OK, and what are the units? No units. Okay, that you can use to check yourself. So this should be, you know, in volumetric flow rate meters cubed per second. There's meters. That's meters squared per second. So that should all cancel out. Okay, so no units. You shouldn't. Uh, you should get something with no units when you have a Reynolds number. Okay, so now two. Okay, part two is we need to uh, calculate. F. Okay, so how do we calculate F? 
We know we had this plot from class where we had f as a function of re, okay? And you know, it looked kind of like this, all right? And there are different expressions for f. So uh, remember that when I'm less than about 2,000, you know, that's the line of 2,000 Reynolds number. When the Reynolds number is less than 2,000, I'm laminar. And when the Reynolds number is greater than 2,000, I'm turbulent. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, in order to uh, calculate the Reynolds number then, there are different expressions that fit this curve, and they're only valid in certain ranges. So for laminar, we have the friction factor is equal to 16 divided by the Reynolds number. So if I have something over here, okay, and that one's only good for the Reynolds number uh, less than 2,000, okay? For turbulent, I have different expression, okay? And for turbulent, um, I have the following expression. Oh, come on, let's scroll down. I need to add a new page. Page, uh, let's see, new page after. So I need a little more space down here. So for turbulent, I have this implicit expression. One over root F equals four log of the Reynolds number times the root of F minus 0 0.4, okay? And it turns out, so this one fits out here. It turns out this one is only valid for the Reynolds number greater than three times 10 to the three. So 3,000, 3,000, okay? Um, so there's a little space in there, right, where, uh, you know, it wasn't quite valid, where you don't have any. You have this transition region, you know, in here, where you don't really have a good expression for that. All right? And so if you want to solve for the friction factor, you need to either f plug the Reynolds number in here and get F, or you need to pr plug the Reynolds number into here and solve for F. So how would you do this? Well, you... Uh, use Newton's method. Okay, uh, or F solve. Okay, something in Python. All right, uh, that said, there is a nice cheating expression in the book, okay, that will allow you to make a calculation for friction factor in certain cases for turbulent flow without having to do an iterative method like Newton's method. So there's another expression, um, and let me write it right here. It's F equals uh, 3.6 log of the Reynolds number divided by 6.9, all of this to the minus two. Okay, and this is valid for the Reynolds number greater than 5,000. Okay, so this was just fit a little farther out on the Reynolds number curve than this one. And it turns out that this one is pretty good. It's not quite as accurate as this other guy, but it's still pretty good. So it turns out, by the way, I forgot to mention, these have names. Okay, and so this one is called the prandtl karman equation. Prand, let's see, I always forget, prandtl, prandtl karman okay, uh, equation. And this one is called the Colebrook-Holland equation. Colebrook-Holland. Okay, so the Colebrook-Holland equation, less accurate, but um, not iterative, or it's explicit. Okay, so we can calculate the friction factor now. We're just gonna plug it into the Colbert-Holland equation. Um, how do I know to use the Colbert-Holland? Well, I know because of my Reynolds number. Look, my Reynolds number up here is 10 to the fifth. That's way out here in this guy, okay? So it's definitely turbulent, okay? And so I can either use the prandtl karman or the Colbert-Holland, and I'm lazy, so I'm gonna use the Colbert-Holland equation. So I'm gonna calculate F is 3.6 log of, and now my Reynolds number, which is 1.02 times 10 to the fifth, divided by 6.9, this whole quantity to minus two. And my Reynolds number is 0 
okay? This is a pretty normal uh, value, excuse me, this is the friction factor is 0 0.0044. This is a pretty normal value for the friction factor. It's small, okay? Uh, it's typical uh, to be small. So small is typical, all right? So if you get a friction factor that's like 50, wrong, okay? It's probably wrong. It's usually around on the order of 10 to the minus three. That's just kind of a pretty classic example, okay? So finally, now I have the friction factor. Step three is find delta P, okay? So now that I have the friction factor, I need to find delta P. Well, how do I do that? Well, I know that the friction factor equals tau W over one half rho U squared. And I know that tau W equals minus delta P over L uh, D over four. Okay, so I can plug and put those together and a rearrange and sparing you the algebra, I get delta P, uh, oops, let me, don't need it over anything. Delta P equals uh, minus two L rho U squared divided by D F. Okay, so that's just, you know, I multiplied this over here, okay, you know, set it equal, multiplied L divided by D divided, or multiplied by four, solved for delta P. Okay, now I just need to plug stuff in. So I put in minus two, and L is 20 meters, and rho was 10 to the three kilograms per meter cubed, and uh, U is, we need to, to find U, we need to use this expression again. I didn't explicitly calculate it for you, but I'll write it right now. Um, it is 1.019 meters per second, okay? And so I put that in right here, 1.019 meters per second um, squared. And then I divide by D, which is 0.1 meters, and I need to multiply by F. So I'm running out of space here, so F was 0 0.0044, okay? So that goes right up there. All right, so I do that all out, and I get a number and my pressure drop is 1827 uh, kilograms per meter second squared, which if I'm a little more, oh, there's a minus sign here, if I'm a little more careful is minus 1.83 uh, kilopascals, okay? So that's my delta P. And if I wanted to calculate the energy, okay, I could do uh, minus delta P times Q. Okay, and I'm not going to do that for you, but you can do it. All right, so there's an example of how I calculate uh, pressure drop. Um, so uh, in a pipe flow, oh, there's where all my pages went. So <clears throat> uh, pressure drop in pipe flow. So if I have something that was flowing at this flow rate at about one meter a second, um, I would lose uh, about two kilopascals of pressure over 20 meters. All right, there you go.